Welcome back guys. Today we'll put up a, a hog pipe. I uh, had one of my lease uh, a few years ago and they work really good. Uh, keep hogs busy for a longer period of time. The way they work is, as you guys can see on this one, um, a PVC pipe. You guys can see all these holes. Hogs will just roll it around. Uh, you have a chain on here which goes to the T-post. And then usually the way that happens is those hogs push that pipe uh, all the way around the, the post. You end up with a almost perfect circle of non-vegetation. So really nothing left in the ground other than dirt. This one, and it's a tip I got from somebody when I built my first pipe, is you have the regular hog pipe section down here. That's where, where the corn gets dispensed. Up here in the top, you guys can see it's a separate section. So we have a coupling and a end cap. In here, you guys can hear there's some corn in here. And the reason for that is uh, this corn obviously makes noise as those hogs push that pipe around and they will think there's more corn in here. So it keeps them engaged in the pipe for a longer period of time, even after, let's say, the, the pipe is uh, empty. So the way you do that is obviously the coupling and the end cap. That's not, not rocket science, but how do you keep the corn from going in the rest of the pipe, right? So that's where we just use some sort of thicker uh, foil or plastic material, but flexible enough so you can push it over the pipe. Uh, then you put some hot glue, uh, cement glue around it, uh, put your coupling on that keeps that, uh, that foil in place. I used, for mine, I used just uh, kind of like those uh, vacuum seal bags you can get. Just cut them kind of like in shape so they are, you know, they stand over like three inches or something over the pipe on all, uh, all sides. Then you just put the coupling on top with the, the hot glue or blue cement or whatever, uh, and that's it. And then you glue this whole thing together, and then you fill this thing up. On this side, you can see that's the, uh, I think they call it the plumber excess or whatever, but um, here you just unscrew this guy. Yeah, just unscrew this guy and then uh, put your corn in here. Uh, make sure you don't put this on too tight. You have to open it next time you come out and refill this thing without too much effort. You don't want to be out here not being able to open this pipe and then not be able to, to put in corn. So just telling from experience here. All right, let's, let's fill this pipe up and then uh, we'll put the T-post in the ground uh, and uh, get this action going. When you pick your spot for this, you want to look into, you want to just lay it out, uh, flatten the ground through the chain and see how far it goes to make sure that there's no obstruction in its path. In this case, I think it should be fine. Um, the one thing we have not done tonight is we haven't brought another PVC pipe. There's one size which fits almost perfectly around the T-post. You wanna get one of those. Once that is in the ground, you wanna have a PVC pipe as a sleeve around that T-post. What it does is, once the chain is around, it just allows that chain to spin more freely around the T-post without getting uh, hung up. Now I had that happen quite a bit in at one of my pipes and that causes them the, uh, the chain to wrap around the post more and more and more and those hogs keep pushing this thing eventually the uh, attachment on the hog pipe to the chain could break off because those hogs are pretty strong but uh, we'll bring one out next time and just add that to it one more thing so that's chris's first pipe he, he built um, you guys have might have noticed there's, there's there are quite a few holes in it um, we'll see how fast that, that pipe drains uh, you're gonna have to play around with it. I would start with fewer holes, uh, maybe put maybe four holes in total in there. You want to um, dispense that corn slowly. Right? It needs to come out slowly, um, but gradually. Uh, so four holes, 
and I think it's between a quarter inch to half an inch hole you need to drill. Play around with that a little bit. Um, so to start small in the holes too, uh, see what size starts dispensing those corn uh, kernels and then uh, that's the size you want to look at. You don't want to have too many holes or holes which are too big in there because like I said it'll dispense your corn too fast and defeats the purpose of having a hog pipe. You want to have this thing as a long-term entertainment device for hogs. So. To get this pipe started, it's a good idea to put some corn around it right now. So I have some corn laying around. What I usually do is also put some molasses around it, just to attract them to it some more. It'll take them some time to figure it out, unless those are some hogs, which are already used to hog pipes them in the area. It'll take them a little bit to figure out what this thing is and how to get corn out of it. Once they take to it, they learn pretty quick from each other and it'll become quite a hot spot. So hopefully in a matter of two to three weeks, this should be a known fun station. So that's the, uh, that's the spy point Link Micro. Right now it's probably the cheapest cell camera on the market you can get. Um, it's very minimalistic if you look at it from the front. So there's literally only one button on there and um, one LED. The one LED tells you if it has cell signal or not. And then all the other settings you do in the spy point app, which is pretty neat because that way you don't have to mess around with the camera too much. Just make sure it has a signal. It has been a really good camera so far. Um, and in this case, oh, just took a picture. In this case, it's gonna take a look at our rock pipe over here and hopefully send us some interesting pictures for the next few weeks. All right, let's uh, park the truck. We're gonna drive it just around, pull it up next to the trees where we had it last time. And um, tonight, hopefully, we won't make the mistake of leaving 20 minutes before the whole sounder shows up. Um, yeah, let's, let's go get ready. Maybe we'll set up the tank first. But we need to take some more hogs off this property. That's why we're back here tonight. And that's why we set up the hog pipe just to draw them in in one central place and we can hit them more targeted. So let's get going.
not forget to be on the rattlesnake farm. So if you guys want to look at those beaver tail cact cactus right there, that's where usually rattlesnakes hang out under. Take a look at this lane. So we have some fence right here, but you can tell like something's just traveling up and down here. And that's exactly where those hogs went for. They came in from the right side, maybe from the back. Actually, I wasn't, I didn't see it where they came from. I was just hearing something. Chris was on the rifle. I was checking the ATN OTS, make sure we have a good image and are recording everything. All of a sudden I hear quite a bit of a noise from the brush and then also some squeals so I went back to the rifle. Hogs were already down there, kind of like behind the feeder. And I mean, I was hoping they come in from the feeder, for the feeder, but they didn't. They just went straight through. They totally ignored all the corn. They crossed the fence line the first few. The bigger ones actually crossed the fence line first. I went for the biggest one, which was left in the group. Chris went for a smaller one to the left of that. And uh, yeah, I got the big one on the ground. Uh, hit a, a piglet, then they crossed the fence line. We have permission right now to shoot on this side too. Uh, so we shot, I take, took two more shots, put uh, two what appears to be like yearlings or something on the ground. Um, the 450 Bushmaster went just through the brush and through all the grass or whatever. Uh, happy with the engagement, not happy that the, those hogs just passed through. We could have taken so many more if they would have stuck around. but. It is what it is. Damn, buddy. We have these three hogs on the ground. Uh, interesting part uh, tonight was that that group came in and just walked through. I mean, having game cam pictures from the past few uh, weeks, um, I thought for sure this hunter would come in for the f for the corn and not just travel through. But all of a sudden, we realized they just kept going. So we focused on the the last big one here, and then we had a few smaller ones come through. Um, we're able to get some uh, as they were going through the trees. Uh, took two shots and they were um, pretty fatal pretty fast. So the 450 Bushmaster um, just knocked them off their feet uh, quite effectively. Uh, on top of that, I mean, there was a sh close distance, I would say maybe 50, 60 yards. The wounds on those two hogs are pretty significant. Nothing I can show here in the, in the vi uh, video on YouTube um, without YouTube freaking out. But um, if you guys wanted to see some photos of those, uh, feel free just to, you know, ping us on uh, the Facebook page, Texas Yacht, uh, or on Instagram, of course. Uh, the sow, she was angled a little bit, so I took a shot um, in the front three quarters. Um, she dropped right away, so that was uh, a good and quick uh, kill as well. Pretty happy with that ball head now. Last weekend um, I had the video head on there which wasn't ideal because there was no um, uh, left right uh, movement. It was uh, fixed so you could rotate and then go uh, vertical. But that's it. So you had to always make sure that the tripod was uh, um, level. Obviously not ideal. Obviously the, the ball head is much better. Um, ran this thing tonight and uh, yeah it feels really good. So. I totally get why everybody's shooting tripods, but uh, in our situations when we are on the field, when we move around quite a bit, this is still going to be a pain in the butt. So um, just hauling this thing around is not going to be uh, super fun. 
but I definitely see the advantage of um, having you know a steadier um, stance and a, a more stable platform to shoot off from. Maybe I'll convert over to the tripod, who knows. Um, we have now those two rockets and you know, taking this off from the HK VP40 and uh, being able to just move it over to the rifle, shooting 450 Bushmaster through it um, with the simple addition of um, a fixed mount. Um, that was just pretty stinking cool in my opinion. One thing we'll be doing pretty soon is um, actually running these rounds through a chronograph. Um, that will help get a better idea of, you know, what kind of velocity can you look at uh, in, the, in that barrel length using this kind of uh, configuration with the, the Bushmaster ACR. Um, also gives us a better idea of what kind of um, uh, velocity and energy we can expect at longer ranges. So far what I can tell is, let's say 150 yards to 200 yards is a stretch with that round in terms of uh, effectiveness on hogs. So it probably stay within 100 yards uh, using that caliber and using those rounds. Again, I'm, I'm new to the 450 Bushmaster caliber. It's the first time we're shooting it. So we're learning as we go. And, uh, and from past experience now over the past few hunts, it seems like that just within 100 yards is where this round um, is, is uh, you know, most effective. So that's, that's what we're going to do. Again, thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. If you like this video, skip, give us a thumbs up and subscribe and uh, be seeing you. Be seeing you, that's what John Vick says. Yeah. I'm just gonna start saying be seeing you. Yeah.